Good morning all. My name is Shaniza and I'm the clinical nurse specialist in our gynecology department, Pontus Manica, and I work uh, mostly in our early pregnancy assessment clinic. I just wanted to briefly share our Healthy Together values. Um, as Min had mentioned uh, in her quote that the patient is going to remember um, what you have said to her, she's going to feel. Um, so it's very important when a woman is bleeding in her pregnancy that she's going through an emotional turmoil. She's confused, she's very stressed, and she is worried. So be kind, be professional, and always look for rooms for improvement to provide excellent care. Value her opinions and her concerns, and work together as a team to provide a better um, care to the woman. <coughs> Just briefly on the outline, I'll be talking about bleeding in early pregnancy, type of, um, types of miscarriages and how they may present, how you can manage them in the community, and when to refer them to the early pregnancy clinic. Bleeding in early pregnancy, approximately 40% of pregnant women have vaginal bleeding in early pregnancy. It can be anywhere from light to heavy, intermittent or constant, painful or painless. Some of the causes of bleeding in early pregnancy are threatened, complete, incomplete miscarriage, missed miscarriage that also includes an end embryonic gestation, pregnancy of unknown viability, pregnancy of unknown location, an ectopic pregnancy, a molar pregnancy, and we also need to be mindful that she may be having um, bleeding due, not related to a pregnancy, so there could be a cervical, vaginal, or other uterine pathology. Threatened miscarriage. Approximately 25% of pregnancies threaten to miscarry. Women may have light to moderate bleeding with or without mild abdominal pain, but the scan will confirm an ongoing pregnancy with a fetal heartbeat. Demonstration of a fetal heartbeat is associated with successful pregnancy rate of up to 95%. So at, the, at that point, you would continue antenatal care and refer her to a midwife or a termination clinic if that's what she wants. Complete miscarriage. She will give a history of passing her pregnancy tissue. At this point, encourage her um, to send this off to the lab for testing. She may have light to moderate bleeding, but settling with a closed cervical os. She may have associated mild abdominal cramps, but again, this must be settling. Incomplete miscarriage. She may have light to heavy PV bleeding with an open cervical os on a vaginal exam. She may have mild to moderate abdominal pain. She may or may not give a history of passing her pregnancy tissue. Or the scan may show that she, have, that she has one more than one centimeter of debris in her uterus. Miss miscarriage is confirmed on a scan when the mean sac diameter is more than or equal to 25 millimeters with no fetal pole or fetal heartbeat, or the crown rump length is more than or equal to 7 millimeters with no fetal heartbeat. The woman may or may not have the signs and symptoms of a miscarriage. In fact, if she has got ongoing symptoms of a pregnancy, such as nausea or breast tenderness, offer her a second opinion scan in the community. <coughs> Pregnancy of unknown viability is the visualization of the gestational sac and a yolk sac with or without a fetal pole. A woman may present to you with a scan that shows a mean sac diameter of less than 20 millimeters or a crown rump length of less than seven millimeters. And assuming this is her first scan in her pregnancy, you should rescan her in one week's time. On the follow-up scan, if the mean sac diameter has grown more than or equal to 25 millimeters with no fetal pole, or the crown rump length is more than or equal to seven millimeters with no fetal heartbeat, you can manage her as a missed miscarriage. Pregnancy of unknown location, she may have variable presentation, with or without pain, with or without bleeding. The scan may be inconclusive, with no intrauterine or extrauterine pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy, it affects one in 80 pregnancies, is important to assess her pain and bleeding. It's important to look at her risk factors, such as previous ectopic pregnancy, any sexually transmitted infection in the past, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, has she got a IUCD in situ, is she a smoker, is she more than 40 years of age, as these risk factors would increase her chances of an ectopic pregnancy. Most common site is the fallopian tube, and less commonly is seen in the interstitial, cervical, ovarian, or C-section scar, or an abdominal pregnancy, which is quite rare. Molar pregnancy, 
Gestational trophoblastic disease is a type of neoplasia derived from a pregnancy. Women may present with excessive nausea in pregnancy. Her uterus may appear large for her dates, or she may have very high beta ACG for her gestational age. It occurs in one in 1,000 pregnancies, and it's quite common in Asian women. Some of the forms of a gestational trophoblastic diseases are hereditary form, invasive mole, gestational choriocarcinoma, and a placental site tumor. What you can do in primary care for patients with positive pregnancy test with abdominal pain and or bleeding up to 19 plus six weeks gestation, we'll quickly go about history taking, examination, how you can manage them in the community, and when you can refer them to our early pregnancy clinic. So in the history, you would check her last menstrual period and her menstrual cycle to see if she has got a regular menstrual cycle, irregular menstrual cycle, or whether she's on any contraception. Quantify her bleeding, um, see if she's soaking pads, if she's passing clots, assess her pain, her nature of pain, location and severity of her pain, and check her past history, such as gravida and parity. With the examination, assess her obs to make sure she is hemodynamically stable. Do an abdominal exam to look for any masses, uh, tenderness or peritonism. Do a vaginal exam and a biomanual exam, because on a vaginal exam, um, you should be able to see her cervical os, and that will help you differentiate between a threatened miscarriage or an inevitable miscarriage. On biomanual exam, if you have any cervical motion tenderness, this will increase your suspicion of an ectopic pregnancy or an active infection. If you see any pregnancy tissue in her cervix, please remove them, because um, this is very important as she can go into cervical shock. Do your triple swabs. If she's clinically unstable with excessive bleeding, or, oops, sorry, or um, you suspect a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, call an ambulance and call our acute gynae team so we can offer her the help that she needs when she arrives. Management. According to the um, scan results, if she has got a threatened miscarriage and, and if she is stable uh, with a fetal heartbeat, reassure the patient, but if she's experiencing pain, consider alternative non-pregnancy causes. If she has had a missed miscarriage, incomplete or complete miscarriage, and she wants to choose expectant management, we are happy for you to manage her in the community. You can um, offer her expectant management for up to two weeks, checking for any signs of an infection, and if at that point she has had no progress, talk about the medical or surgical option, and if she wants to choose that option, refer her to our early pregnancy clinic. If it's a non-viable pregnancy or an incomplete miscarriage and she wants to choose medical or surgical option, refer her to our early pregnancy clinic. With the medical management, we admit them onto our gynae care ward, we give them isoprostol, and we follow them in our early pregnancy clinic until she has had a completed miscarriage. With the surgical management, they have an epoch and they get discharged back to your care. If it's an inconclusive scan, then discuss with our acute gynae team and refer her to the early pregnancy clinic if she is hemodynamically stable. Women who are rhesus negative with an ongoing pregnancy, they can collect their NTD directly from blood bank or come to Middlemore Hospital Lab and take it back to your clinic rooms for administration. If it's a non-viable pregnancy, then refer her to the early pregnancy clinic and we'll take care of her. EPEC referral. We have a clinical nurse specialist, a house officer, and a registrar, and we get an oversight of an SMO. At the end of the day, we all meet together and we go through all the cases that come through um, early pregnancy clinic and we go through the referrals as well. We are open Monday to Friday, excluding public holidays. We, we get lucky there. So contact us on 276 0044, extension 8355, if you have any concerns or if you want to talk about any referral that you want to put through. Fix the referrals to 2503811. And just a friendly reminder, we're not a walk-in clinic, and we do not offer a second opinion scan. So if the woman is wanting a second opinion scan, please organize it in the community. Thank you.